Welcome to Money Making Conversations. I'm your host, Rashawn McDonald. Each Money Making Conversation talk show is about entrepreneurship and entertainment. I provide the consumer and business owner access to celebrities, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and industry decision makers. Let me tell you something, everybody who's listening. It is important to understand that everybody travels a different path to success. That's because your brand is different. The challenges you face in your life are different. So stop reading other people's success stories or clips or or anything. Uh, go to their movie and say, I want to be him because that's their story. That's the path that they walk. You cannot replicate how they got there. So you have to start writing your own stories. It's really important when I say that. Now you can be motivated by their success because their stories can offer you direction and help you reach your goals through their efforts. So you can just go, right, that's how they did it. Maybe I can do it that way. But remember... They did it their way. So you have to have your own planning and your own committed effort. My guests on Money Making Conversations have that same passion, and they share that information when we talk about their career, their motivation, what they are planning, how they've overcome the odds, and how they live a balanced life, which leads to sharing with us the secrets to their success. My next guest is a product of Harlem, New York. I like saying it. A product of Harlem. Put this here, I put the emphasis on Harlem, New York. He is a media personality, author, astro numerologist, lecturer, professor, and has studied numerology and astrology for many years. He's brought the subject to light by way of his books, lectures, and appearances on both national television and radio shows such as Oprah Winfrey Television Show. He is on the show today to discuss his revised and updated edition of Numbers and You, a numerology guide for everyday living. Please welcome to Money Making Conversations, Lord Strayhorn. Rashawn, thank you so much. And sorry about that little mix up with the you know, movie is about to go retrograde. I don't know whether you're familiar with this phenomenon, but it's a uh, Mercury rules the planet of communications. And when it goes retrograde or simply out of sync, out of alignment, or slowed down, so does everything else. Communications, I thought you said two. No, you said three. Uh so it's a lot of things that goes on. So we're in the shadow of it now, and in fact, it becomes full effect on February 16th, next Sunday. Absolutely. I'm born in the month of February. My birthday is February Me too. 27th. My birthday is on Sunday, the awesome. 16th, and yours is 12 days later on the 28th. Pisces. Pisces making it happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's really Actually, interesting. I, should, if I was going to be a Pisces, but my mother said she couldn't hold on. So uh, no, no, whatever no, that but Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You got a good Pisces on the phone. I'm, I'm, I'm rocking it, brother. I'm rocking it. <laughs> so, you know, it's really interesting because we go through life when we see, uh, you know, the astrology section is in all, everybody, every newspaper. And, uh, yes. You know, and you know, I'm as successful as I claim to be, and I'm educated as I claim to be. I still would look a Pisces and see what it says. Why, why, yeah. why are we why are we drawn to that information? Why are we drawn to astrology, even though we say we uh, we don't believe it doesn't matter what it says, but we're drawn to it. Why is it, Lord? Because we're always curious about ourselves and our future. What's around the corner? Uh, what's the next move? What's the next step? Especially, Rashawn, when we're in moments of doubts or decision-making or at that crossroads, as they say. And so it's no accident that since the beginning of time, famous men and women from Napoleon Bonaparte used astrologers. Uh, J.P. Morgan, in fact, used astrologers. In fact, in his day in the early 1900s, Rashawn, when the media approached him about the fact that he used astrology and is it true it makes millionaires? He says, no, it makes billionaires. And what a lot of people don't know, LaShawn, is that actually Evangeline Adams, the astrologer of her day, actually taught J.P. Morgan astrology. And in fact, he hired an astrologer on his staff, and so did Charles Schwab. So if you notice, to this day, you have J.P. Morgan Bank and Charles Schwab Investment Company but way back in the early 1900s, they both had one thing in common. They both employed, they both had an astrologer on their staff. Wow. So tell me this. What exactly is an astrologist? Astrologer is one who makes a study of the zodiac sign. Right. And that is determined by the nature of the planet. Each planet rules a sign. Each sign rules a characteristic. And these signs are broken into four elements of earth, air, air. Uh, fire and water. 
And so this would explain things. So, for example, when I take your birthday, February 28th, not only are you a water sign, but you also a fire number, which means you bring to the table of life intuitions, feelings, hunches about things, right. yet passion, determination, and conviction to get things done. That's right. A romantic. A winner, you know, a poet. Come on, add, add all the good stuff to that, Lord. A ro- romantic, <laughs> you know, poet, you know. A natural yeah, leader. Yeah. All I see, I know all my qualities. <laughs> because well, always, what happens is numerology is like the kissing cousin to astrology, right. and the mm-hmm. glue between the two mm-hmm. are the planets that rule them. Mm-hmm. So, if a person says mention the planet of the sun, mm-hmm. I know they're talking about a Leo, or numerically they're talking about a number one person born on the first, the tenth, the nineteenth, or the twenty eighth of any month. And so this, that's the combination. So I've just merged the best of the sciences. But, you know, you said something earlier where it sounded like me in my evolving. I started reading about great men and women and things like that, what made them who they are. Right. And everybody does go at their own rate of speed, their own rate of time, and according to their own set of numbers, which right. you do and I do and everybody else for that matter. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's really interesting when I, um, in high school, um, I studied uh, numerology, and I studied palmistry, and I I, I was so p- and um, uh, uh, driven by it that it was it was my uh, national science project, you know, and really? and it, it was uh, and it was it was uh, and so when I submitted it and I I, I you know I won in my high school, and then I was at the state level, and and all the all the uh, judges would come by, and of course you know I knew what I was talking about. I knew numbers. I knew how to do numerology, and I knew palmistry. And they would walk away in awe that I could pull this type of information from the lines in their hands, the type of fingers that they had, and the patterns that are consistent tied to their personality. And so, but when you have that ability, it really does help you uh, understand people who you're talking to, their personalities, and also can give them good advice. Is that a part of your life as well, giving advice to people you may or may not know? Well, here, let me give people just a quick business tip. If you're talking to a very important person in front of you, pay attention to the length of their fingers. Absolutely. The longer the fingers, the more details they expect from you. The shorter the fingers, the less details they expect from you. Mm-hmm. So if a, a, a person sitting across from you has very short fingers and they say to you, Lloyd, is it, this is a yes or no question, answer it in a yes or no fashion. Don't say, well, you know, Mr. McDonald." One day, back in the day, they don't want to hear all that. Is it yes or is it no? And so these things, these are observations and physical observations that help guide a person intelligently about the person in front of them. Mm-hmm. So Napoleon once says, the face may deceive, but the hand never. That's so a exactly woman can true. have all the most beautiful makeup on the planet, but if she opens those palms of her hands and they got ugly lines in it, lines that are all out of sync. Yes. I don't care how good she looks, okay, for <laughs> Sean? <laughs> hey, I, 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 I got to tell you the truth. You know, like I said, you know, if your fingers are lo- long and slender, you know, you have music or music background. You know, yeah, that's right. Art driven. Yeah. I, I remember that. I'm telling you something. I was into it. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I, you know, in life, you know, you know, I'm 18 years old. And I always tell people that your destiny is tied to what you, to your, often tied to your youth because that's when you were, were, were a thinker, were a dreamer, were a person who wanted to advance your opportunities beyond wanting to work a normal job. And I always remember yeah. that that, that I, I think, I feel I still use those qualities because they were just natural to me because people always say you, you can make a decision about a person so quick, Rashawn, as soon as you meet them. Because I can, because I, I feel that what I learned as a, in, in studying numerology, what I learned in studying uh, palmistry, it really helped me have confidence in myself in communicating when you're talking to strangers or talking to people that you know, correct? Sure. No, no, you're 100% right. And in fact, of many of my clients, the common thing they'll say to me, man, I wish I'd have known this a long time ago, how to align their seasons, how to be in the right place at the right time. Because if you can be in the wrong place at the wrong time, why can't you be in the right place at the right time? And that's what took me years to figure out. So when I talk with clients, I can tell them that that's is their best dates, their best months, their best ages, their best years, and a host of other things. 
that's absolutely fascinating. And as long as I've been doing this, I am still amazed to this day. <laughs> Are you amazed to the, at the reaction that people give you or the information? Yes, you're yes, able to, yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And I have a way of putting a and a on things. For example, in numerology, what, what, and see, here's what got me into the numerology world. Mm -hmm. Numerology, like astrology, deals with your birthday. But numerology is the only metaphysical branch that deals with your name. So people will hear me on the Money Making Conversation show, right? Right. So they'll be talking about their signs for a minute. And then the next thing you know, yeah, Lloyd, yeah, Rashawn, yeah, so-and-so. We're back to the name. Mm -hmm. Well, in numerology, the name denotes your natural talents, your gifts, your skills, your abilities, the kinds of people that are likely to be drawn to you, right. the occupational leanings that will take place, for example, and a host of other goodies. So uh, to give you an example, I took the liberty of your first name, Rashawn, okay? Because the first name is the active name, as I tell people. Absolutely. It's like a start a job today. You give our first and last name, but by Friday, it's like, hey, Rashawn, hey, Lloyd. Mm -hmm. So when I did the name Rashawn under the Chaldean system, the name adds up to a 29 and 2 plus 9 is 2. Mm -hmm. Now, what's amazing is this. It, the two rules of mechanical, mathematical sciences, computers, technology, engineering, uh, things of that nature – Two also rules the food industries, too. Because if you look at how the two is shaped when you write it, it's almost shaped like the intestines of the stomach. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, people who have two in their name or their birth, they are normally thinking about their eating habits, dietary laws. They make caterers, chefs, restaurateurs. But listen, I can't wait to get a hold of some easy, squeezy, lemon peasy, or whatever you call this thing. <laughs> it looks like about two of them. I look like I get about two or three of those, okay? It also tells me that there was a higher than average probability one of your parents could have either been a can Cancerian, which is late June, July, mm -hmm. or a Taurus, late May through June, or born on the 2nd, the 7th, the 11th, the 16th, the 20th, the 25th, or the 29th of any month. Mm -hmm. And you get along better with the females. Mm -hmm. yes, then you do the males. Mm -hmm. And so your target audience probably be too. Well, you know, yes, my target, target audience is uh, are female. But, of course, you know, because I studied numerology in, in high school, I knew that about my name. And But, you know, ah. but, but as you go through life, you tend to forget that. You know, you, and, I, sure. and, and so this sure. is really, you know, I, I have my executive producer and I have my other producer, Sam. They're looking at me because they're saying things that you're saying. They know it's about me. I'm very tech savvy. I, I love food. I'm a foodie. I'm a baker. So all those things, and you've never met me. And so this is information you gather and through through the process. And so some people can say, "Oh, that's sweeping generalizations. Oh, it can it can match up anywhere." But if you do your work correctly, you can really grind grind down or uh, uh, make uh, make it more granular so it really fits you and make it and make, make you realize this is a life that you can lead if you're confused about what you want to do in life. That's what numerology can help you, correct? It, it does. It opens up a lot of things. I, I, let me ask you this. Were you born in Houston, Texas? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, because, see, what people don't know is each city and country and nation have their own numerical frequencies. Yes, they now, do. Now, to give you an example, you're born on the 28th, 2 plus 27. It's the 27th. It's the 27th. It's the 27th. Huh? It's the 27th, Lord. February 27th. Oh, the 27th. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I stand corrected. That's a nine. So your numbers will be the nine, mm -hmm. the six, and the three. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But what happens is one of the numbers that are strongly, strongly attracted to the nine is the one. For example, one represents the alpha, nine represents the omega, the beginning and the end. So I noticed that the cities you lived in, where well, you were born in Houston, that's a, that city adds up to the number one. Then I know that you lived on First Avenue, you came here to New York during your common stand-up comedy days. That's right. On, I think at <laughs> the time you were on 86th Street. Yes, sir. And then you came back to New York again on First Avenue, living on 39th Street. That's correct. And then in 1990, that's when you moved to L.A. Absolutely. All right? And then, you know, you said you got your first uh, tasting experience from... Uh, Sessions on 118th Street in Harlem. Absolutely. But New York City is the number one. Mm -hmm. Atlanta, where you resided, is the number one. Even your office, 100, adds up to a number one. Mm -hmm. But if you were born on the 27th, that means your key numbers are the nine, the three, and the six in that order. Mm -hmm. So people say, well, what does that mean? And they think it's about going to a lottery place. No. No. 
these numbers, once I glean it, it tells me what your best days are. Your best days are always on a Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Why? Because nine rules Tuesday, three rules Thursday, and six rules Friday. Mm -hmm. So of all the days, you've got to make decisions. So with my business clients and I do their calendars, they do this based upon their numbers because certain days are better than others. And so with that, I know that you're blessed with six months during the year, which is March, April, and May, October, November, and December. So if you look at when you may have gotten your car or signed these contracts mm -hmm. or got Steve Harvey off the ground, because I know I think I started back in 1984 when his, uh, mm -hmm. his uh, business manager was killed in an accident, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but what it does is it also shows your consistency, too. And nine people, two plus seven is nine, mm -hmm. have very good opinion of themselves. They do not take orders from anybody. <laughs> they like to be the mass of their faith and the captain of their ship. Oh, Amen. Good. Okay. Hey, Lord, me, I'm going to go to the next break, but I'm going to come back and share some of the thoughts that you just talked to me because it's real important that people hear what I try to say on this show about it and bringing Lord on it really is taking me back on the journey to let me know that I am now living the path that I had set when I graduated from high school. That's all. We'll be back with my man. He's a astro numerologist, expert. Let's put the word expert in front of his name, Lord Strayhorn. We'll be right back with more from Rashawn McDonald and Money Making Conversations. Don't touch that dial. Money Making Conversations continues online at www.moneymakingconversations.com and follow Money Making Conversations on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time you stop thinking about your dreams and put some plans into action. Hi, this is Rashawn McDonald, and you're listening to Money Making Conversation. The show today is to discuss uh, my guest's revised and updated edition of Numbers and You, a numerology guide for everyday living. He's back. He's uh, changing. He, he's not so much changing my life. He's just reminding me of uh, my course of action was always planned. And now I'm really living it now. And that's what I preach to every, every people all the time is that really, if you're confused and you don't know what you want to do in your life, just go back to when you was 18 in those early 20s when you had a dream and it kind of shifted. It could have shifted because of some physical uh, illness. It could have shifted because of relationship. It could marriage, a job, you could move. All those things can cause you to shift out of your dream. But more importantly, that dream is still inside you. And so as I hear you talk, Lord, about numbers and talk about my name and talk about the city and state and the cities I lived in, because I did live on 86th and 1st. I did live in New York on 39th and 1st. I did, I have lived in Houston. I have lived in Atlanta. I have lived in Los Angeles. All these things are important. But, and also Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, that's those are important days to me. I work like that. I told my staff I got to get my first quarter right so I can have a successful March, April, and May. I just bought my car last year, my newest car in the month of May. Also, I told my staff in the in 2019 I had to get my fourth quarter right, which is October, November, and December, because I just felt I had to do that. I just felt with inside me it was important. And then hearing you deliver this information back to me during this call is crazy good because that means that. I have to I have to continue to understand that my course of action has already been set. I have to just accept it. And that's what a lot of people don't do, and that's what you remind them through your practices, correct? That is correct. And what happens is we're so busy looking in anybody everybody else's backyard, we need to look in our own backyard. That's why Earl Nightingale called this thing acres of diamond. You're so busy looking over there that probably right under your very own feet are acres of diamonds that you have not tapped into it. Not only that, people won't know what a real diamond looks like in the rough anyway. Absolutely. They'll think it's a piece of stone and kick it out. But for those that are astute, for those that are persistent and consistent, they know when that stone, that dirty stone is cut and polished and shaped, it's of huge value. And that's how we do our dreams. Wow. Let's talk about... Uh how can we get in touch with you? Do you uh, what is your website? Let's, let's go there before we start talking about your book because of the fact that it's a revised and updated edition of your book, Numbers and You. Let's talk about how can yes. we contact you and tell us about your website. Well, my website is lloyd-strayhorn.com. So it's L-L-O-Y-D, lloyd-strayhorn, S-T-R-A-Y-H-O-R-N.com. 
Uh, I'm on Twitter under Numbers in You, Facebook under Numbers in You, uh, what's that other, uh, Instagram under Numbers in You. Uh, this book that you're talking about, actually, I, I, I actually written uh, three other books. I've written a total of six books. They can see them all when they go to Amazon.com. And for those that would like to reach out to me, uh, they can call my toll-free number, which is 1-800-581-4401. That's 1-800-581-4401. Now, I'm going to admit, when I when we start talking about, uh, you know, because you know, on our show we had a lot of um, people who are gospel artists, and sometimes, and jokingly, when we start talking about astrology or start talking about, you know, they'll start talking about, that's devil's work. You know, you, 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 you're following that, you're leading people away from God. Well, when, when you hear that, because you talk about it in your book, you know, the book I'm talking mm-hmm. about, Numbers and You, a numerology guide for everyday living, when they say things like devil's work and leading people away from God, what are your comments on that? Well, you know what's interesting, Rashawn? People don't know. I went to seminary school. I was going to be a minister myself, believe it or not, except I just do God's work in another way. Mm-hmm. And here's what I do. I do have three, three sections of the religious body that feels what I do is devil's work. But this is how I explain it to them. Religion is a belief, Rashawn. What I do in astrology and numerology is a science, so the two don't compare. Mm -hmm. In other words, in order for me to do your chart, I have to use the scientific method of taking the month, the day, the year you're born, the time and the location. It doesn't go any other way. And then I'll tell people, name me a war since Cain Cain killed Abel in the Bible. Name me a war that's been fought in the sign of Pisces. They can't name me one. (laughs) Name me a war that's fought in the name of the number nine. They can't name anyone. Mm-hmm. But all throughout history, there have been religious wars. Now there's the Protestants, the Catholics in Ireland, the Muslims and the Hindus in India, okay? My God is better than your God. It's a belief. So therefore, this doesn't interfere. And then when I tell people the Bible is a numerology book, they get upset. Yes, they do. Because if you go to the Old Testament, the fourth book of Moses is called the Book of Numbers. Now, what's it going to say? I wrote that. <laughs> that God instructed Moses on the second day of the second month to name the armies by their name and their pole. And then when people want to talk about the 12 tribes of Israel, all they got to do is go to that same chapter, the fourth, the, uh, the, uh, fourth book, of, uh, the book of Numbers, and further into that chapter... God gives the numbers of all the 12 tribes, every single one. So the Bible is a numerology book. You cannot name a a chapter, verse, they'll say Psalm 23, verse 2, or chapter, you know, um, (laughs) Genesis. Preach, Lord, preach, Lord, because I know you've had this conversation many times. (laughs) Yes, and when my mother used to take me to church on Sunday as a boy, okay, (laughs) I'd hear them women up there talking about that hymn number look real good. I know what that meant at the time, you know? Right, right, And they right. keep it in all week. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, and, and imagine trying to go through a world without numbers. Imagine uh, Stephen A. Smith going October the 5th trying to live in a world of athletes where numbers are not used. Yes. How can he talk about the stats? How mm-hmm. can he talk about the scores? You know, you can't do anything without numbers. You go to your dentist today. Each tooth in your mouth is assigned a number from <laughs> one to thirty-two. You know, it's really interesting. Don't get me started, uh, I got to because see, you, <laughs> I, I got started in high school, so so I knew I, I knew numerology was a science. I knew that palmistry was a science. I didn't think it was like devil's work because I knew that if you applied mathematics, it would eventually guess what? I got my degree in mathematics. Exactly. And exactly. So, and so I so. This was just a, you know, reason I'm excited. What uh, my executive producer of the show, Samantha Taylor, brought your name to me. She said, Rashad, would you like to get him on?" I said, "What does he do?" I said, "Oh, oh, 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 he has to be on the show." And just to talk about, you know, this is kind of like, you know, to me, it's like, you know, you, if you know, you're my godfather in a sense that, mm-hmm, you know, you mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. of the fact that you, you have, you have, you have went beyond my thought process, but you're reminding me. Rashawn, you was you was headed down the right track. You know, you 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 understood how to be successful using these philosophies. It's all about science. There's nothing offensive about it. But That's and then right. eventually exactly. got your degree in math. All scientific. And, and you've all yep. and, you've, and you've lived your life based on the principles of numerology. You've lived your life. Look at you first, first, yep. first, first. 
Houston, yeah. all of it, and the months are important to you. And so I have subconsciously taken that information, buried it in my brain, but I've lived it all my life. And then for and you, you to remind me today, looking at the background, what little background I could find on you, you seem to be very, very much in sync with what you do. Yes. But then again, Pisces is referred to in astrology as one of the psychic signs that they know. They just don't know how they know. But if they go by their feelings and they go by their hunches, and then if listen, you listen, y'all, listen, listen. I'm telling them, them listen. Yes, they, they, they always, how you know that, Rashad? How, why are you just gonna Why are you just gonna say that person name? <laughs> well, walk away from that person. He's a fool. <laughs> I say, hey, I just know that's a fool sitting over there. I don't know. They might dress well, but that's a lot of craziness yeah. sitting in that chair over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, let's talk about the book, my friend. You've revised it. It's updated. When you say that it's revised and updated, what exactly does that mean? Well, what it means was I published my first book in 1987. Yes, sir. This one was published in 1997. Now I have three other books that was published in 2016 that they can see on Amazon. One is, and I have them in different colors. This, the one you and I are talking about is the orange color. Right. And I have a rose color book. That's Lloyd's Numbers and You Relationship Guide for people about relationships, marriage, the best time, this, that, and the other. Then I have another one called Lloyd's Numbers and You Workbook. That's in green to teach you how to do what I do, but in a very rudimentary way. And then my third one is my blue book, which is Lloyd's Book of Numbers, a numerology guide for the 21st century and beyond, which is really an extension of the book you have that takes things to a whole nother level. And as long as I've been doing this over 40 years, I'm still learning, still, and I still is excited. That's what's, and I'm just as amazed as if I just started yesterday. It's the most interesting thing. So Confucius says, when you find your passion, you never work a day in your life. And that's right. what you and I do. Right. Well, you know, it's really fun. First of all, it's a fun conversation. I enjoy all my interviews on Money to Make Conversation. But to hear an interview that has reminded me that I have lived my life according to a foundation I set in high school. Just I follow, I'm still following the rule, that foundation that was very key. And so my success that I'm living right now is, is going back to or accepting the responsibility of that foundation that I had laid when I came out of high school. And I tell people that all the time who are confused, who are, who are bored, who are dissatisfied with the course that their life is uh, leading them on, that, you know, just go back. Just go back and look and uh, lay that foundation. And so, but you, can, but you can help them now if they are confused. You can help them now if they don't understand what the future can hold. You're not predicting the future, but you can lay the framework of how it should be, correct? See, I use this as a guide. For example, a person will get up this morning, and they say, okay, they look at the weather, it's going to rain. So it may rain or it may not, but it guides you as to, okay, if it does rain, I need to go out with my boots, my umbrella, my raincoat. That's all it does. Wow. It just acts as a guide. It doesn't, you know, grab you. And I, and I think, well, anyway, I've got a whole philosophy. The next time I'm on, I, I know I'm going to Well, I'm telling you something. First of all, not, you, you, know, you know you're coming back. And you know that Good. when I come to New York, we're going to eat lunch or dinner just Please. as friends, just Please. as friends, because, you Please. know, I just need to, I, I like I'd surrounding myself with people who have similar drive, similar passion. That, that's where I'm heading in my life now, Lord, is making sure that people around me uh, motivate me, but also accept the values that I have and don't think that the way I talk is crazy or don't think that I have any negative spirit. I always walk away from the negative spirit and you are not a negative spirit. You're a motivator. Because of the fact yeah, that I know people I have do. thrown that's a lot of bricks at you. People, and my clientele are primarily women. But well, men need to be open to this, too, on, yeah, so yeah. they can live their lives better. Well, we'll, we'll, get, them, we'll get them there together, well. Lord, me and you. Because guess what? Yep. I straight up, we're going to talk. I'm, I'm, t I'm the truth. I'm success. And I would definitely let everybody know that you're the truth. Again, before we get off the, off this, or wrap up this interview, Lord, please tell everybody how they can reach you on your website, your social media, and that 1-800 number. Okay. It's in lloyd com, and they can read their Zodiac sign for the year 2020. Then my toll-free number, if they want to reach out to me, that's 1-800-581-4401. And they can always visit me on my media sites, Instagram, numbers in you, Facebook, numbers in you, uh, Twitter, numbers, and you. My man. I want to yeah. thank you for taking the time to come on my show. I want to thank you for taking the time to remind me of my greatness and remind me that... Brother, that, we're all great. Yes. And let me say this. I tried to explain 
that when you have millions and millions of sperm going after one egg, mm-hmm. and we are the result of that one egg that was connected, right. every single one of us are special. Absolutely. It's what we do or don't do with our specialness. Well, that's what Money Making Conversation is all about. If you want to meet, hear other episodes of Money Making Conversation, go to moneymakingconversation.com. This is your host, Rashawn McDonald. We'll talk soon.